Being one of the first NPCs you ran into in this franchise, Dr. Zed has become a staple for fans having this weird charm about him. Dr. Zed Blanco was born and raised in the town of Firestone on the world of Pandora. Firestone was never a giant metropolis, but it did average around almost 300 residents. It was primarily used as a space for Dahl's mining force. Zed took up an interest in the field of medicine and over time became a doctor himself. Though it would seem, especially since it's Pandora, his practices were not very orthodox compared to most standards. He lives a fairly normal life, all things considered. He ventures outside of town from time to time wherever his job takes him, but he's always had an unwavering soft spot in his heart for Firestone. He did acquire a medical license, but also had that taken away at some point. But that never really did stop him from his passion. In fact, he set up tons of medical vendors all around Pandora for those who needed it, branding them with his face. Despite being a small local business, he put these to good use all over and expanded where necessary. Anyway, when Dahl's mining force were abandoned, it caused a drastic uprise in the population of bandits on the world. Firestone was on the receiving end of this, and over time the population whittled down quite significantly, down from almost 300 to just over 20. Life here became a hazard, and with dwindling numbers, it gave people even more of a reason not to stay or move in. But Zed could never leave. He stayed until he was literally the last remaining Firestone resident. A notable interaction he had in his life was with a new resident who moved in with his wife just outside of the town named TK Baja. TK would get into his own troubles when a skag killed his wife, he attempted to gain revenge, but failed miserably. He lost his leg and was blinded. Zed was the one who patched him up and gave him a new prosthetic leg. Anyway, having already been the hub for Dahl, it served as a great introduction town for any newcomers who came to the planet. Marcus Kincaid would frequently drop off new Vault Hunters he picked up and they would venture through Firestone in the process. One group of Vault Hunters he met was the team of Roland, Lilith, Mordecai, and Brick who all helped them out during a bandit attack. As a thanks for what they did, he helps the group get a feel for the surrounding area, telling them about Nine Toes, Sledge, and introducing them to some of the locals. Per usual, his job took him into New Haven from time to time, but overall, he initially served as a great introduction to the initial area. After the events of Borderlands 1, Zed never left Firestone. He considered it his home. Even when Handsome Jack and Hyperion came down to the planet and Roland and the Crimson Raiders were relocating everyone to Sanctuary, Zed couldn't leave Firestone behind. He did find himself in a lucky position, though, as being the place where Roland and the others' journey first began, Handsome Jack sought to claim Firestone as his own and not destroy it. Initially, Mr. Blake was sent down to buy him out of it. He tried to heed him a warning, but Zed refused the initial offer. Hey, Roland, this is Zed. I thought you might want to know, some guy from uh, the Hyperion Corporation came by. The name of Blake. Said you dealt with him during the Claptrap Uprising. Anyway, he offered me a pretty penny from a place here in Firestone. Was real insistent that I take the money and run. Uh, it's probably nothing, but there was just something about him that put me on edge, you know? I'm gonna stay here for the meantime, though. I ain't no hurry to leave my shop. With the first proposition denied, Hyperion took a more threatening approach, showing Zed pictures of what they did to New Haven, which he didn't believe and thought had to have been fake. Roland, Zed. If you're receiving this, respond as soon as you can. Blake came back again today and showed me some faked pictures of New Haven. The city was burning. A lot of people were dead. Blake said his boss burned the place to the ground when everyone living there wouldn't move out. Of course, I know those pictures had to be faked because you and the rest of your pals were holed up in New Haven and you would have stopped those troops from taking the town, right? It wasn't until the attacks actually started that he took Roland up on his offer and moved to Sanctuary. Hey Roland, I appreciate your offer to move into Sanctuary, but I got a lot of stuff here in Firestone. Uh, Sanctuary sounds nice and all, but Firestone's my home. I made my decision. If I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die in the city I was born. Firestone. Attention, citizen of Firestone. Die. Oh, piss. Second thought, Roland, uh, when's the soonest you can come pick me up? I'm sure it wasn't an easy decision, especially after seeing what Hyperion did to it. 
Within Borderlands 2 itself, Zed doesn't really have any sort of role. He sends the characters out to do a few side missions, but nothing that has any sort of lasting impact on him or the overall world. He was the cause for a few abominations to nature, most notably he was the reason Scrax came into being. Part Skag, part Rack. He had combined both of them, creating this hybrid. He had done this with a few other abominations as well. It wasn't until the Commander Lilith and the Fight for Sanctuary DLC that he became a bit more relevant. You see, as it turns out, Zed has actually developed a little bit of a crush on Tannis. And so he figures if he can be capable of figuring out a cure to stop this new disease, she might take a liking to him. The way I see it, I don't need me some kind of license to help people, and I think I'm just the guy to cure these mutated husks of the men they used to be. But I'm gonna need some mutant matter to study. Could you bring me whatever falls off them green bloods you're fighting? Then I'll cure this thing faster than you can say, Hey, that guy doesn't have a medical license. Get him out of this children's hospital. Just between you and me, I also got a bit of an ulterior motive for my little project. You see, I'm trying to catch the eye of that tennis lady. I like the cut of her graduated cylinder, if you catch my meaning. <laughs> These don't go too well either, usually just worsening the symptoms. After two failed attempts, he figures he should try and better himself as a doctor and get his medical license reinstated. While there does seem to be this slight spark between him and Tannis, nothing as of yet has led to anything. Maybe I'm just not cut out for this. No, oh, who was I kidding? Tannis ain't interested in a dummy like me. Maybe it's time I finally get the old medical license reinstated. Yes, hello? I must ask who has been discarding these utterly magnificent dead specimens? Oh, uh, well, that would be me. <laughs> Hi there, Tannis. Well, hello. <laughs> Time for you to mosey on out, Vault Hunter. I'll take it from here. <laughs> and for now, that's where Zed left off. He didn't appear in the core story of Borderlands 3, being replaced by Tannis nor in any of the DLCs so far. For now, it seems like he did really go off to obtain his medical license. So who knows, perhaps he will come back an even better doctor than he was before. Some other fun facts about Zed that I didn't feel I could neatly fit into his chronology are his brothers. He isn't the only doctor in his family. Dr. Ned bears a striking resemblance to him, but his practices are much more unethical and tampered with the reanimation of the dead. Along these two are the third brother named Ted. TK Baja says he's the unspoken brother. Oh, great horny toads. Must be the scrack nesting up there in the blades. Better clear them all out. I'm sorry. Those abominations there were made by good old Dr. Zed. Speaking of which, have you seen Zed or Ned lately? What about Ted? Oh, oh, wait. I'm so sorry. We ain't supposed to talk about the forbidden brother. My bad. This aspect of his lore are much more questionable, so it's hard to say if the brothers are canon and in what capacity. Another fun fact about Zed is that he was originally the character designed for what Roland was supposed to look like. But clearly he went through a design change, but they found good use for him in the form of Zed as an NPC. But for now, that does it for the history of Dr. Zed, an absolute classic character you just never want to see go. If there are any other characters you'd like to see me do the history of, then be sure to let me know in the comments below, and until next time, I'll see you in the next video.